everybody, could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. Engineers at Harvard have created what's being called the world's first robot flash mob. The so-called mob is composed of 1,024 tiny machines called kilobots, created by a research group at Harvard's School of Engineering and Applied Sciences and Vis Institute. On command, the kilobots can assemble themselves into shapes, such as a starfish or, as seen here, the letter K. Each individual kilobot is a simple machine able to receive basic commands and communicate with its nearby neighbors in the swarm. As a whole, the kilobot swarm is capable of completing much more complex tasks than any one individual within the swarm would be able to do, much like a colony of ants or cells in an organism. The kilobots represent an advancement in the field of robotics, but they stand as evidence of a broader principle as well. They demonstrate how complexity arises from a multitude of simple individuals. That principle is key not only to our continuing development of robotics, but to our understanding of life itself. Next up, potential good news for gamers and parents of gamers. Playing video games could benefit children and teenagers. So long as they don't go overboard, that is. A study of 5,000 people between the ages of 10 and 15 conducted by Oxford University and published in the journal Pediatrics finds that those who play video games for less than an hour a day tend to be more likely to be satisfied with their lives and have higher levels of sociability than either non-gamers or those who play games for three hours a day or more. The study's lead author stresses that it's not yet understood what particular attributes of games make them beneficial or harmful to children as they mature, and that, of course, moderate gameplay alone is not sufficient for developing sociable, well-adjusted children. Still, it looks like a little gaming here and there is better than no gaming at all. God, you guys were right the last time I did a video game related story. All these stock photos of people playing video games are terrible. Finally, a new study shows that musical instruction can help strengthen reading and language skills in children at risk of academic underachievement. The study, conducted at Northwestern University and recently presented at the annual convention of the American Psychological Association, focused on public school students from low-income communities. Two groups of students were followed for two years, their neural responses tested and brain waves recorded. One group joined the band or choir and the other joined the junior ROTC. At the conclusion of the two-year study, researchers found that neural responses among the ROTC group had remained the same, while neural responses among the music students had strengthened. It's thought that musical training improves a child's ability to respond to sounds, enabling them to interact with their environment faster and more precisely. Yet more evidence that music education programs, which are often targets of cutbacks when financially strapped schools are forced to trim their budgets, can have lifelong benefits for students and help counteract the achievement gap between students from affluent communities and low-income students. Engineers at Harvard create a self-organizing swarm of robots. Moderate video game play might actually be good for growing children, and learning music can make your brain stronger. That's the good news. You seem tense. Is it the robots? Do you think that future generations will look back on this as the beginning of the end?